Welcome y'all, it's Wes with DIY Food Plot Pro. Thank you so much for joining us. I am getting a lot of calls from a lot of the clients, a lot of comments on a lot of my food plotting videos saying, Wes, we're behind. We hadn't got anything planted yet. The early middle part of May, we are starting to get really nervous about it. And this is something that as farmers and as more experienced food plotters that we deal with every year, we realize that we don't go by a calendar. We go by Mother Nature's calendar. We go in and we plant, we spray, we cultivate, till, whatever we do, we do that on Mother Nature's clock. Whenever she allows us to do that is when we go in. I have talked many a times in the past about waiting until the soil properties are right, till the soil is properly dry before going into those farms. But it became clear to me that I had never made a video actually explaining what I meant by that and showing a visual as to what condition the soil needs to be in. How can you physically check your soil to make sure that you're not doing more damage than what you are good. A lot of people try to get in the fields too early with a tiller, with a disc, and they call it a disc it or work the ground to get it to dry. That's almost always a bad idea. That is not doing good things for our soil properties. When soil is wet, it has a much higher potential of being damaged when it is on the wet side. Where if it is dry, it has a whole lot less potential of being hurt by compaction and things like that. The first thing that we have to do when we get behind on food plots is, is just be patient. We understand that this is how it happens every single year. We set a target plant date. After I've consulted on that property, I have a target plant date, but that plant date is plus or minus 15 to 30 days whenever mother nature lets you get in there. So I might say, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna shoot for May 1. I love shooting for May 1 on a lot of my plots. We've had a good solid month of the frost and the freezes are over with around here. And that gives us a good solid month. The soil temperatures are beginning to warm up. Uh, May 1st sets our food plots up well for quick growing and really get out of the ground, resist a lot of that browse pressure, and it gives whitetails time to find a lot of summer food before we go out there and try to be the very first ones planting. One of the worst things that you can possibly do to any food plot, farm field, whatever, is to go out and work that soil wet till it, disc it, anything like that. If you're doing that wet, you are not doing good things to the soil. You are 100% making a compaction layer on that soil. That is not a good thing. We, we want to avoid that at all costs if we possibly can. Let's get into what the soil properties look like when they're optimum, when they're too little too wet, when they're way too wet. I've got some examples to show you guys. So fortunately, we've been getting rain about every single day around here. I have zero food plots planted as of right now. I've got all my ag lands uh, planted. We had about a two week window to plant them in April and everything else, uh, has, it's been rain, rain, rain. So no food plots are planted here in Western Kentucky for me, and I'm not worried about it. They'll get planted when they get planted. We have no idea how the rains are gonna fall. If we knew for sure that the rains were gonna fall in June, they were not gonna fall in July or August and September, then we would plant accordingly. The problem is we don't know that. We have no idea what the summer is in store for us. We plant and we hope and pray that God provides the rain that provides nutrition to our crops and lets them grow. Um, other than that, it's completely out of our control. So don't worry about it. Just work it when the soil's right, plant when the soil's right. This is clearly topsoil. This just came out of the field. I just picked this up just a few seconds ago. Okay, at first glances, sure looks wet to me, right? Uh, kind of has a real dark look to it. You know, clearly my hands are getting kind of sticky, gumbo-y on it. This is ridge ground, so it shouldn't be sticky at all. Very little clay in this. So let's find out if this is too wet. The way that I like to do this is you crush this up, okay? Look, just crushed into a big solid ball, right? We can form this right in to anything we want to form this into. It's wet. You can actually hear the moisture into it. Way too wet. You can do that with it. 
that's no good. You are not doing good things. Look at all the staining on my hands. Okay. All right, but that was clear. I mean, that was pretty easy for any, most anybody to understand that that ground's too wet just by looking at it. Another piece of soil, right? Definitely a different color. Same type of soil, by the way. So now you can see visually the difference, right? That we have much more soil. Let's crush it, see what happens. Still works into a ball. Little bit of partial, little bit of stuff here. For the most part, all still working right into a ball. It's right on, this is right on that edge. This is when a lot of people are gonna fix to go out there. Still just a little on the wet side. Got some here. This soil is 100% drier, no question about that. Visually, you can see the color difference again. Uh, light brown on this one. And we're gonna try to crush this into a ball. You see all that just falling through my hands? Look, as I crush this more, all it does is break down and that's all that's left. And if I kept crushing, it would just continue. There's not enough moisture to pack it, okay? We're left with this little ball, watch this. I hope y'all saw the difference there between those three different ones. I have seen a lot of folks, talk to a lot of folks that have gone out when their soil was like that first one, that dark black and tried to till, try to disc, and boy, you, you just don't understand the damage that that can do. You can create an awful lot of damage. We definitely don't wanna have like a compaction layer out there and all of a sudden turn a dry land, well-drained soil into a soil that doesn't drain because you've compacted it to the point to where moisture can no longer go through it. Uh, another thing that can happen is when you go out there and you plant it a little too heavy is what how farmers call it. So when you plant it a little too wet, you can plant way before you really should. It, just FYI, way before. So you go out there and you plant from the surface, looks fine. What happens is you basically smeared each side of where the seed was dropping in, you've smeared that wall. And when that wall gets dry, it basically turns into concrete. And then the roots have a really, really difficult time, maybe not even are able to go out the side and get down to get those nutrients. They just physically can't get through that hard layer and they just stay right in that trench. A lot of these things that are, are things that a lot of us don't even think about. When we just go out and we're, we're, we're trying to food plot, we're trying to do good, and then we go out there and we're gonna disc this to dry. I mean, how many times have we all ever heard that? We're gonna go out here and disc it to dry. Golly, that's a bad idea. When we're looking at these samples, we like to go down about as deep as what we're looking at. So if we're looking at planting an inch and a half, that's how deep we wanna take the, that sample to see if we can mold that into a ball or if it just kind of breaks apart. It's always gonna kind of go into a little bit of a ball. But the, the reality of it, when the soil is right, you should be able to rub it and it basically should just start falling to pieces instead of forming into a mud ball. That's what we're not looking for. We get that mud ball, we're too wet, we need to go to the house and wait another day, day and a half. This time of the year, the wind's blowing, the sun's shining, it don't take long for the sun and the wind to dry the soil down. So it might just be another day, day and a half that you need to wait till you can really get in the field and, and plant in optimum conditions to where you can start with the perfect start for your food plot. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the video helpful. If you have, smash that like and subscribe button.